Now, this little lens has a unique combination of factors that no other lens on the EFM mount has, and that is that it is one of the sharpest lenses on the mount, it's one of the widest lenses on the mount, and it's also one of the cheapest lenses on the mount. That is an incredible, unheard of combination. It also happens to be one of the very best lenses for astrophotography and astro time lapse. And I almost strictly use it for astrophotography and astro time lapse. Now, there's a combination of factors that make this lens so good for astrophoto and astro time lapse. And the first thing is it is so wide. And the wider the lens, the longer you can leave your shutter speed open without getting a streaking or blurring of the stars. The second thing is that it is an f2 aperture. That means it lets a whole lot of light in, which gets the highest quality image and lets as much light as possible hit the sensor. And the third thing is just how darn sharp it is. The sharper the lens, the better when it comes to astrophotography. Now, there is something you do need to know about this lens because it also has something about it that no other lens on the EFM mount has as well. And that is that this lens is a circular fisheye lens. And what that means is when the image coming through the lens is projected on your sensor, it doesn't actually fill up the entire rectangular shape of the sensor. It actually just fills a circle in the middle of the sensor. This is what a circular fisheye is. And this lens is so wide that you would generally, when using the M50, get your knuckles in the shot because the lens actually sees beyond the plane of flat from the lens. It actually sees behind the lens at the very edges. That's how wide this lens is. It's really quite incredible. And as a general purpose photography lens, you get this sort of very unique look and it kind of looks like you're looking through sort of a peephole in a door like you have for security purposes to see who's knocking or ringing your doorbell. And for that reason, just looking at general purpose photography, it does get tiring pretty quick of using it. It gives you some unique, fun images, but it, very quickly, it's not something you're gonna wanna just live with on your camera. But for me, the way that I like to use it the most is for astrophotography and astro time lapse. I'm about to talk about how I use the lens as a circular fisheye for astro time lapse, but you can edit the image to fill the full screen. So don't run away if you're afraid of that circular image. And there's a couple of things that I think work with this. One is astro time lapse, uh, particularly, is very interesting when you see the animation and the way that the world turns and the stars move around the world. And I think that works really well in a circular image. And my favorite way to use this lens is as a day to night time lapse lens. And I often will use it in family travel videos when we're out traveling and maybe we're at an Airbnb for the night or camping next to a lake or something like that. And we have a clear sky. The way I like to use the lens is I set it up for an astro time lapse. I let it run. And then often when I'm sort of producing these videos just for my own family purposes and my family videos, I like to have a kind of a clean ending or a unique ending to the video. And I kind of like to end it at the end of a day. So most of my videos start in the morning and end at that night and to sort of I encapsulate that day in a single video. And a day to night time lapse with the circular fisheye, I find a really cool and a really nice way to end those videos. The other thing about using it in that way is rather than going through a normal video where you've got your sort of normal rectangular shots like you would expect, and then you uh, halfway through the video all of a sudden are getting these circle images on it, by using it as kind of like a, a full stop or a punctuation on the end of the video, I think it work, works really well because you've gone through this normal thing and then we've got this really unique time lapse and you'll see with the examples I've shown on screen, the way that things sort of move around in the circular fisheye, it just looks really cool and it just works really, really well with those sort of night time lapses. Now you don't have to exclusively use it for night time lapse like I do. There are some other ways you can use it. It is a fun novel snapshot lens so you can capture some images you can't with any other lens. The lens is so small and 
compact. You can pretty much take it with you anywhere and it's not going to be a burden. It is surprisingly heavy for how small it is. I mean, it is an all metal lens and this thing is packed with metal and glass. So it feels extremely premium, well exceeds the price you're gonna pay for it. You'll be shocked at how well built this thing is. Now I should mention this lens is a completely manual focus, manual aperture lens, which is exactly the way I want my astrophotography lenses to be. And that's because when you're out shooting astrophotography, you set the actual focus to infinity, you leave it there and you don't want it moving anywhere. With a autofocus lens, it really struggles to focus on stars, so you have to manually focus it anyways. And if you ever bump the manual focus ring, it will go out of focus and you will now have all of your stars and your star trails and your time lapse be out of focus. So. Uh, absolutely, if you are primarily doing astrophotography, I highly recommend you use a manual focus lens like this. The other thing you can do with it, because you get such a massive wide image, if you like to publish square photos, whether that be for Instagram or Facebook or any of the social medias that really prefer those square formats, you can actually crop a square image out of the center of the circle and you still have tons of information and you have an image that looks more like a normal image. It doesn't look quite as fisheye and it doesn't look like a circular fisheye. So once you crop into the middle of the image, you've created an image that is still completely unique, completely something that people are gonna kinda go wow about, but it is not a circular fisheye, it is a, not a circular image. So that gives you a little bit of versatility if you are willing to or interested in publishing square format, either photo or video. The third way you might use it, particularly for a lot of people that have the Canon M50 out there, is the Canon M50, when you shoot in 4K, it crops way in. And by having this super wide circular fisheye, once you crop in that 1.74 or five times on top of the crop that's already on a crop sensor camera, you end up in this situation where there's only some little dark corners at the side left of the circular fisheye or the circle effect. You've actually eliminated most of the circle by doing this. And if you wanna just get rid of those last corners, you can either just crop in a little bit or you can use a plug-in, something like D-Fish, to remove the fisheye effect, and just sliding the slider a bit will just sort of take a normal fisheye out, the sort of normal fisheye image out of the image, and it just moves those corners out while preserving most of the image. So once again, you can fill the whole frame and you don't get those little corners. So that is another way you can use it is if you are specifically have the M50, or I think, Maybe the M200 also has that cropped in 4K mode. So anytime you've got that cropped in 4K mode, you can certainly use this lens for video like that. But for me, the place this lens absolutely shines is that if you are on a budget and you want to do astrophotography, astro time-lapse, or day-to-night time-lapse, and those are the people that I absolutely recommend this lens for. It's also the cheapest way to get into astrophotography. This is probably my second favorite astrophotography lens. My number one favorite astrophotography lens is the Samyang or Rokinon 12 millimeter, but that lens tends to be two times the price or more. This is a very cheap way to get into astrophotography and get pin sharp results. And in fact, this lens is actually sharper overall than the Rokinon lens. So if you don't mind the circle effect, you actually are going to get better image quality out of this lens. Now I have delayed making the video about this lens for about two years because for the past two years, this lens has been out of stock everywhere. And I don't know why or what happened to it but it has recently come back in stock. It is sold under two different sort of generic brand names. And I will link both of those and all the different links in the description down below that I can find for this. It may sell out again. So I will put a few different links down there. And on completely the other end of the spectrum, if you're looking for the best telephoto lens for the Canon M50, I've just thrown a video on screen now. This is definitely the lens I recommend for sort of telephoto, sports, wildlife. It's a native EFM mount lens and it fits really, really well with the EFM mount cameras.